that I think making movies and creating brands are very much the same. Because you have to tell a complete story, and if you don't get the story, you can't create the set, you can't create the dialogue, you can't create the music, you can't create the emotional content, unless all the creatives understands the movie they're making. The question I asked myself is that the department stores sold a lot of beauty products, supermarkets, drug stores sold a lot of beauty products, but there really wasn't an effective specialty store that had rationalized beauty products. And I was particularly attracted to bath and body products because there's everyday usage, there's use up. So you'd be inventing a business that had traffic and it was a place where I thought we could dominate. The investment community looked at it and they said, nobody's done this because the cosmetic guys do it, the Louders, the L'Oreal's, or the Procter & Gamble's do it at mass, and this, there's no such thing as a specialty store business. And they could prove that there wasn't because there wasn't. The cosmetic guys said, you just can't begin to understand the complexity of what we do. So it, uh, it was daunting. I mean, I, I felt pretty lonely internally. We were really trying to do something that was impossible. Funnily enough, at our board, they said, you know, you have a lot of good ideas. Maybe this is one. Let's give it a shot. That's the business we're in. We make new movies. As we began the business, spent a couple or three years visiting beauty companies. One of the things that I picked up pretty quickly is that they all talked about the efficacy of their product. And what they mean is the consistency of the product and that people know how the shampoo feels or how the shower gel feels. So when I talk about efficacy, I'm talking about really knowing. A movie director probably likes his movie, and I think efficacy is like that. You have to create things that you believe an audience will like, real customers, and then you have to really like it yourself. I know I'm a storyteller, but my stories are created to products that people buy and so we're gonna sell bath products. And there was something very compelling about it being an American brand. But if you were gonna do healthy products, where would you locate the brand? And so everybody went to uh, the Sonoma Valley. That's where all the healthy stuff was and that's where the people were that lived that healthy, good for you lifestyle. And the more I thought about it, it wasn't as good as uh, the heartland you know, Midwestern values, Midwestern sensibility. And so I went from California kind of spa, hot tub site to say, it's from the Midwest. And I thought, well, gee, well, let's just make it here. I think I have a skill. I can find a market position, and then I can invent a story that tells that product story convincingly. It's much easier for me to imagine somebody that has a set of skills that matches perfectly to what I'm trying to do. So I find stories about imaginary people. And then I think, well, what should we name her? Some kind of an all-American name like Kate from the farm in New Albany, and she goes to the, and her husband's name is Sam, and she's very down to earth, and her family has values, she has values, Midwestern sensibility, hardworking, curious, goes to a good school, creates a business to help support herself and her young family. It's quintessentially an American story. There's a wholesomeness about her. And then you can say, would Kate do this or would Kate do that? You know, does this packaging, does this gift set look like something that Kate would have? And I think that editing, what's in and what's out, is very important. And it's, and it's much more easily done with a fictitious person than a real person. The exceptional growth of Bath & Body, the, the first 10 years, compounding 40% growth, absolutely is unprecedented. No one has matched that record before and no one has matched it after. And it was very energetic about the growth possibilities. And, and in some ways, as I look back, I don't, it was virtually without error. We tested a scent, we rolled the scent, we tested a scent, we rolled a scent, and we were just going as fast as can be. Everything was new to the world and it was very good. As a business gets larger, 
700, 800, 1,000 stores, there's a certain amount of caution that automatically comes in. I think businesses lose their entrepreneurial spirit. And Bath & Body, instead of evolving from their position, getting better at their position, distorting their position in new or creative ways, kept doing what they were doing and competitively began to look like a caricature of ourselves. Maybe a store would have had a thousand SKUs, had 10,000 SKUs, there was one of everything. And it was on a tidal wave of creative ideas, some big ones, some small ones, some good ones, some bad ones. Nothing that was sustainable and nothing that looked like a brand. People's ideas change, and so the brands constantly have to be evolving. You have to go back and you have to understand the story, the intention of the author, so that there's a care in how those brands evolve. What I began to realize that beauty products were becoming more sophisticated and globalization had its impact on this brand. So the question was, do you modify Kate's view of the world and kind of make her into a more urban, more sophisticated vision of herself? Or is she the foundation of the brand? And in the next generation, there is a daughter. Does she just have a more sophisticated view of the world than her mother? You want to feel good about yourself. It gives you a sense of security. It's the right stuff, and it's good stuff. But the foundational things about quality, about efficacy, about people wanting good things for themselves and their family, those foundational things never change. If I don't see the product as sophisticated, glamorous, and good, I'm not likely to give it as a gift. So that notion of gift giving and self-treat, it's a present I give myself. So I want personal care products that are good, glamorous, every day just as a little treat for me. It's finding emotional spaces because it has something to do with how you appreciate yourself. Kate is timeless. That mom that cares about her family uh, sees things from a wholesome point of view. I think that's a, that's a timeless story.